Hey, this is Jose with Oakland Latinos United, a.k.a. Oakland Latinos Unidos, out here in the bay, the estuary, the waterfront, the wharf, whatever you want to call it, out here by the Fruit Belt Bridge, by East 7th Street, Chapman Street, my old stomping grounds where I grew up as a kid and partly as a teenager. And, uh, yeah, the video I wanted to do today <clears throat> was called, I am a street kid, but I always wanted more, my testimony. And what I mean by that is I want to give you guys a little bit about who I am and my background. Things that I've never talked about in the past in making my videos. <clears throat> so you get to get to know who Jose was. And when I say a testimony, I don't mean like a religious testimony, but it's similar. It's more of a testimony to you guys, the subscribers, to the followers, to my ancestors, to my dead homies. You know what I mean? And to whoever's above, whether it be the Lord or the universe, this is my testimony. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video, comment, and let me know what you think. But I'm going to get deep into my life, and I'm going to, you know, have some emotional <clears throat> discussions with you about my life. <laughs> so as many of you know, I was born and raised in East Oakland, California, 1977 at Highland Hospital. You know what I mean? I came from immigrant parents. My mom was from Mexico, from Tijuana, but she was originally from Michoacan, but grew up in Tijuana. My dad's from El Salvador. They met up out here in the Bay Area, and they had me and my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> and uh, basically, we grew up on East 7th Street, and we lived on Chapman Street as well, not far from here. And growing up, you know, we were poor. You know, my parents... The first half of my life were undocumented, but eventually through the Ronald Reagan thing, they were able, the amnesty, they were able to fix their papers and their status. And, you know, eventually they started having better jobs and we started having a little bit more money. But early on, we were very poor. And I grew up in, in you know, East 7th Street at that time, you know, was a barrio, was a hood. You know what I mean? <clears throat> there was a lot of drug dealers, gangsters, gangbangers, you know what I mean? Paisas. You know, Chicanos, a little bit of everything. And uh, the way things moved there were not always good. There was always drama or some kind of crazy thing going on. In spite of the good memories I have of the neighborhood, there were also bad memories. I remember going to sleep hungry a few times. I remember us barely getting any food because, you know, maybe we had a little bit of food stamps left and we had to go. I remember going to get free uh <clears throat> government cheese and butter in Jingletown as Mary Help of Christian's Church back in the days. <clears throat> Free bread from like local charities. So we struggled. You know what I mean? It, I, I didn't come for, with a spoon in my mouth. Nor did I come from a rich or powerful family or nothing like that. I came from a very poor working class Rasa family here in Oakland struggling to make it. When I was 10 years old, I experienced my first homicide I ever seen. I seen a homicide happen in front of me when I was 10 years old. This had to have been 1987. And a family member did that homicide in front of me. And, you know, people went to jail over that and that's all been resolved. So it's not like I'm talking on something that shouldn't be talked. But as a 10 year old kid, that messes with you. That gives you PTSD. You know what I mean? That's not normal for a 10 year old kid to see. But I seen it growing up here in Oakland. <clears throat> and, you know, I knew a lot of people in the hood who, by, by, by as time went by, they were going to jail, they were getting killed, etc. You know what I mean? And then we moved to Sacramento when I was 14. That was about 1992. <clears throat> and the same thing. I go to Sacramento and I experience the same things. Gangs, drugs, poverty. And then I moved to Vallejo. Same thing, gangs, poverty, drugs. I live in Richmond for a time and I come back to Oakland for a time. Gangs, drugs, poverty. So everywhere I would go, even when I would visit family in SoCal, it was always the same common denominator. Gangs, drugs, poverty. You know what I mean? People hustling, people doing what they got to do to survive. And I always see my raza, my people and the black people in that same struggle because I grew up around a lot of African-Americans as well. And, uh, you know, 
I always say that I'm a nerd and I'm not a gangster and I don't have nothing to prove and that's true I'm not a gangster and I never portrayed myself to be a gangster but I am a kid from the barrio I am a kid from the hood you know what I mean I grew up with Vato Tocos I grew up with crazy homies you feel me I grew up with dudes who were active and dudes who were selling dope and dudes who were hustling you know those were the people I was around whether I was in Oakland whether I was in Sac whether I was in Vallejo Richmond I even had a really good homie from Concord, you know what I mean, who was an active homeboy, really good friend, my homie D, who passed away a few years ago, you know, he was deep in the game hustling, so I started hustling, you know, I started shoplifting, I started doing what I had to do to make a little bit of money, because I liked having money, I liked having cars, and I liked having women around me, so I felt that I had to do what I had to do, whether it was hustling some things here and there, stealing some things here and there. I had to do what I had to do. Now, mind you, I always got lucky and I always got jobs back then. I was always hooked up with little part-time jobs. So I, I wasn't always caught up in, in hustling and doing shit like that. I didn't really go the gang route as much. I hung around a lot of dudes who were gang members. I even hung around a dude who was an ex-MS-13 and we were hustling together for a while. So that, that should tell you something that I didn't care what gang you were from. If you were cool with me, you were cool with me. But yes, I agree. Most of my homies, a lot of them were affiliated to the Northerners. But, uh, you know, as, as I started hanging around a lot of these people and getting influenced by people who were doing bad things, I started to go down that route. I started having drama with people. I started even attracting my homies' dramas to me. I started going to jail, getting caught up. <laughs> Because at first I was lucky I didn't get caught up in nothing. But now I was getting caught up and normally I was just spending the night in the Oakland City Jail or, or in um, <clears throat> North County in downtown Oakland. Usually it was overnight. I come in one night and go out in the morning. But then finally one day they kept me in Santa Rita and I said, man, this shit sucks. I get a week. And that was two weeks after 9-11 at that. <laughs> so you could imagine. But I was like, man, this shit is for the birds. This shit is not what the homies make it out to be. This shit fucking sucks. Being caged like an animal. So I never went back to jail. And I started cleaning up my act. And I started doing, associating myself with better class of people. With educated people. I started getting into the organizing thing and the political thing. And then I started, uh, you know, I started going to school myself, going to college. I stopped hanging around you know, dudes who were doing bad things. And some of the homies that I stopped hanging around were getting shot, were going to jail, were doing all bad. One of my homies, the one that passed away, started doing good, actually. You know what I mean? My homie D that I mentioned, who was from Concord. And um, he started doing good, so I started doing good as well. Then I started Oakland Latinos United, and I started doing some community organizing. I started having a better message, a more positive message. I was just angry and tired because the, the, what I grew up around was bullshit. And I didn't want the younger generation, the generation coming after me to go through what I went through and my family went through and a lot of my homies went through. Because what we went through was not normal. It was bullshit. It was colonialism. It was set up. You know, self-hatred, you know, hopelessness, poverty, you know what I mean? That's what creates gangs and problems. And that's why I started pushing that message in Oakland Latinos United, you know? And my channel has never been a gang channel, a, pr a, a prison channel, a promotion of the streets or ghetto channel. My channel is a community channel for La Raza to do positive things. That's what my channel is. So I found myself at one point, this is where it gets emotional. I found myself at a point in my life where I had no direction. I didn't know where to go. I was scared. I was confused. And I fucking literally had like a nervous breakdown. I started crying. I started not thinking about suicide per se, but I started thinking, what if I was dead? Maybe the world would be better without me. Maybe my family wouldn't have the burden of having me around. Because I wasn't working. I wasn't doing. There was a part of my life where I wasn't doing anything. And I remember I started watching a video about suicides. I don't know how, but I just started watching a video about suicides. <clears throat> and at the end of the video, they showed the family and friends of the suicide victims. 
and how it affected them, how the suicide of their family member or friends affected them. And I just started fucking crying and just emotional, but I was glad that I was alive. And I was glad that I realized that if I were to die or kill myself or anyone was to kill me, there would be a huge burden on my family. Not only to bury me, not only to, you know, to spend money for my funeral, but the emotional trauma it would leave on them, period. The scar it would leave on them. So I was glad like, that, that night I finally reflected, man, I survived the ghetto. I survived, you know, being around gang members. I survived, you know what I mean, hustling. I survived all kinds of shit. Because really, guys like me, Chicanos from Oakland and from the Bay Area, we don't live past 21 sometimes. And here I am, at that time I was about 30 something, I'm 43 years old, and I'm alive, and I'm here to talk to you guys. And I'm so happy I'm here, because there's so many people, so many around me, and even people that I didn't know, that are not here to tell that tale, man. That are dead and gone. You feel me? So, the point is, I had a realization that I wanted to do better. And I shit you not, the next day, I had more confidence. I started getting work again. I started learning about music and getting into music. I started doing my channel again. That's why my channel restarted a few years back. And I've been trying to improve the channel. And I've been trying to send a positive message to just stay away from the bullshit because it's not going to get you anywhere you know and yes Jose is a street vato I'm a street dude I'm a dude from the barrio you could even say I was a vato loco at one point you feel me living that vida loca but I wasn't an active gang member I was living it in other forms but I got caught up in it as well and I got other homies who got caught in it even deeper that they're no longer here you know what I mean and uh, basically what I want to say is there's a future for everybody out there, man. If you really put the work to it, you know. And me, you know, religion wasn't really my thing. I know a lot of people get saved by religion. And hey, if that's what's going to help you, then who am I to say anything? You do what you got to do. But I believe that, you know, going to school, going to college... Educating your mind, learning your history, learning about your culture, learning about your people, learning about the struggle. You know what I mean? It's always going to help you, man. Because a, a person without knowledge of their history is like a tree without a root. And that's what Marcus Garvey said. And I believe educating yourself and surrounding yourself with people who are going to help you succeed. And, you know... Stepping outside of your comfort zone Thinking outside of the box And doing things differently Is gonna bring you ahead You know what I mean But at the same time Yeah if religion Or getting a good job Or learning a trade Is gonna help you So be it Do it But don't waste your time on these streets man Because these streets are always gonna be here But there's no future in them You know the only future is the coroner's office, which is where you're going to be, or the or the cemetery, or the jail system, man. Or you're going to be on these streets homeless, like a lot of these poor folks are out here doing, struggling. There's no future in it, homie. There's no future in this bullshit. And me, Jose, I always wanted more. Always. I always felt that I was put on this earth to do more. I always felt, and I don't know why, that I was on put on here to send a message. What that message is, I don't know, but I believe it's to send positivity and to send people through a right path. And I don't I may not have much. I may not be the most famous YouTuber. I may not be the most famous musician because I do do music. You know, I may not be the most famous dude in the hood. But I do what I got to do and I keep it moving regardless and I try to blow up every time And I've been blowing up on YouTube, so I'm starting to go down a good track, which is good 
But, you know, if any youngster out there, just anyone in general, just hears my message. And it'll be like, damn, he might hear my voice one day when he wants to do something bad. And he's like, man, that dude Jose from Oakland Latinos United was right. It is crazy out here. It is bad out here. And there is no future out here doing dumb stuff. And I did my job. That makes me happy. More than blowing up on YouTube or, or you know, whatever. I've been doing this for almost 20 years, this, this Oakland Latinos United thing. And I don't even make money off of it. I've been doing it for free. And you know why I do it? Because I actually care. I love doing this. And I care. I care about my people. I care about my community. And I care about the future of our raza, of our gente. That's why I do it. You can laugh at me. You could think I'm, I'm full of it. But that's why I do it. And that's who Jose is. So you can understand who Jose from Oakland Latinos United is. I'm not looking for clout. I'm not looking for fame necessarily. I'm just doing what I have to do. And whether you like it or not, it is what it is. You can support or you can't. You know what I mean? I prefer for you to support, but if you don't, hey, I understand it's not for everybody. But hopefully you under got a good understanding of who Jose from Oakland Latinos United is. And hopefully you could take something from this video. And just leave a comment. Let me know what you think. It was emotional, man. There were parts of this video that made me want to cry because I revisited some things. That I, that I haven't revisited in a long time And I'm keeping it real I have nothing to prove to any of you You know what I mean It is what it is I, Even I get emotional sometimes And it is what it is Nothing wrong with that Nothing ashamed to be at that You know I'm not looking for anybody's validation I just do what I have to do And I keep it moving So yeah man That was my testimony Jose from Oakland Latinos United I'm going to keep on bringing you good content, keep on bringing a positive message, and keep moving forward. Adelante, raza. Take care. This is Jose out here in beautiful Eastside Oakland, out here by East 7th Street in my old barrio. Late.